Hello, this is Columbia's Guide to Source Filmmaker. Today's topic, using sequences. Wait a minute, I thought using sequences was cheating. Uh, well, it kinda is cheating. See, because if someone who plays TF2 is looking at your poster or watching your video, in which you use lots of sequences, they'll know that you're using lots of sequences, and it'll turn them off. It'll make it look less professional. But that's not to say that sequences have a nice place in SFM. And I'll show you what I mean. In a way, I guess it is cheating, but there's a good way to use it. Now, in SFM, in order to import a sequence, what you do is you right-click your model, go to Import, and select Sequence. From here, you have a big menu, which lists every animation that the model has. This ranges from running animations to idle animations, swimming, jumping, everything. And so, this is your library of animations that are already in the game. So, if you want the scout to do this, there we go. Just press OK, and our scout for the duration of the clip is doing that. So, this is a little problem that people usually run into. Here, it's a run animation, but after exporting, he's not really going anywhere. Now, for new people, this is usually really frustrating, but all you need to do is come down here and change this to post params drive root. And what you'll find is that your model will now run around the map. Although, to be fair, in a straight line. Uh, it takes more animating to make him do more complex motion along things like stairs and ramps. So, what about using sequences tastefully, like I was saying earlier? What are some useful applications for using sequences? Let's look at this scenario. Here, I have a very simple pose set up. But what I want to do is I want the scout to be holding a scatter gun in his right hand, because that's the hand that he holds the gun with. Now, the problem is, if I come and I add the scatter gun through add TF item when I right click the model, it looks stupid and broken, and it doesn't match up at all. So instead, what you should do is select the right fingers, then come and select all the weapon bones. Do this on the animation set editor, or do it through the viewport, either is fine. Right click in the animation set editor and import sequence. Now from here we can pick a scattergun holding animation and there we go. His hand is now posed because we only selected the fingers to undergo the posing from the sequence, which means now we can add the scattergun and it'll be mostly fine. Just a little bit of tweaking and it'll be better. See, it can be very helpful to do this, because you can apply sequences to selective bones. And with that, sequences become a little more powerful, because you have more control over what's being affected and what isn't. So, let's go back. Now here, I have the scout in the pose, but I want him to start walking. I want... So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna import a sequence, of course. Walking sequence for... a uh, Walk Loser. I'll set the move X, change the pose params, drive root, uh, but you'll see that it ruined the scattergun pose. It reset pretty much all of the upper body posing and the finger posing because it was all selected. But if we use selection and we select the legs and the root transform and the pelvis, what we can do is we can import a sequence to those bones only, and what we'll find is that we can put this leg running animation like this, and it'll apply while preserving the upper body. Now keep in mind that this looks ridiculous. Uh, you don't have to include the pelvis in this though, which is what I did, which is probably why this looks really stupid. Uh, but of course, it's not perfect and it does require tweaking, so don't think you won't have to tweak it. So I decide this pose looks stupid. So I want to reset it, but I don't want to reset the finger posing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all and then deselect the fingers and the weapon bones. Then I'm going to import sequence and import the ref sequence. And what we see here is that it preserves the finger posing and the scatter gun. So it's all the same and it stays with the model and none of that gets lost. And if we want, we can import some more leg walking animations, like this, let's say a crouch walk. See, selectively choosing what to sequence is a good way to create organic animations quickly, because they, are, they can help you lay 
the basic grounds for stuff like walking animations, and basic movement that would take otherwise hours. But you shouldn't rely on them too much. It's more of a helpful tool than it is uh, a cheat. More so than it is a way to just bypass everything. Because like I said earlier, people who play Source games, more specifically TF2, will notice them. They will see the sequences being used. So, now that you know this neat little tip, you should get into the habit of only using sequences when doing selective bones, and never really applying it to the whole model. You, get, you should learn to pose and animate, yes, but sequences are good help and a good guideline for getting you on the right track to get the animation you want.